Math today, Thursday, April 9th. Today for math, you need your speed drill lesson 131 out of your packet. The front looks like this. We're doing lesson 131 today. And you will need pages 261 to pages 262 out of your math book. So in our usual routine, let's go ahead and take out speed drill 131. Make sure your name is on it. And you are doing lesson 131 on the back. Reduce to lowest terms. Okay, so be sure that you don't just put the number that you're reducing by, but that you reduce. Reduce means to do what? Divide. You got it. So you have three minutes and you may begin. You have about 30 seconds. All right, so time is up for that. We could just lay that aside. It'll be fine. Put my timer away. All right, by way of review before we start today, let's look at our solving um, for our unknown, our letter here. Um, so let's be sure that we are just reviewing one of these quickly to keep it fresh in our mind. With these equations, we are solving the side that is solvable first. So we bring down t minus 12 equals, what's 7 times 4? 28. So now we come and we're trying to get rid of the 12 so we can just isolate t by itself. So we do the opposite of subtract 12. What's the opposite of subtracting 12? We add 12 and we also add 12 on this side, okay? Minus 12 plus 12 will give you zero, so that will leave 
t, then 28 plus 12 is 8 plus 2 is 10, 2, 3, 4. So t equals 40 here. Okay, so we go back in, we plug in the value for t, we have 40 minus 12 equals 7 times 4. We hope, right? Okay, so 40 minus 12 equals 7 times 4. Is 40 minus 12? Uh, I don't know, Miss Upchurch. Come over here. 0 becomes a 10, the 4 becomes a 3, 10 minus 2 is 8, 3 minus 1 is 2, so 28 equals 28, and that checks. Okay, so just keep those fresh in your mind. All right? So if you look at your paper today, we have a new concept, but this is going to be super easy for you today. We are... Um, taking our 10 and 11 multiplication tables, and today we are working on our 10 and 11 division tables, 10 and 11 as divisors. So I'm trying to get that whole, that's a, here we go. Sorry, it's a little bit too close. So there's the 10 division table and the 11, okay, there we go for that. We are just doing the opposite of multiplication. So today we're going to talk about dividing into groups of 10 and dividing into groups of 11. Now if we were in class together, we would take out our sheet of paper and we would build these tables together. So just be sure that you have these handy because you're going to start seeing some um, problems with 10 and 11 you know, as divisors. Um, 60 divided by 10. All right, so just be sure that you are familiar with these. All right, so let's look at your um, box at the top, okay? 30 gumballs, 10 gumballs in each machine, three gumball machines. 30 gumballs divided by 10 equals three machines. So if you had 30 gumballs and you were putting them in groups of 10, you would have three groups of 10, three gumballs machines there. All right, we'll go ahead and look at the example of 11. 99 pieces of candy. Ooh, ooh. 11 pieces of candy on each plate. They're big pieces of candy. Nine plates of candy. If you had 99 pieces and you were dividing in 11 groups, you would have nine groups of 11. Okay? So just our division table. All right. So let's look at number one. You're going to write your quotients. Okay? Start here. 0 divided by 10 equals 0. Correct. Is 0 times 10 0? You know, you got it right. 10 divided by 10 equals 1. Yeah, you'll see this pattern. 20 divided by 10 equals 2. 30 divided by 10 equals 3. 40 divided by 10 equals 4. I'm on 1F. 50 divided by 10 equals 5. 60 divided by 10 equals 6. 70 divided by 10 equals 7. 80 divided by 10 equals 8. 90 divided by 10 equals 9. If you had 90 pieces Divided into 10 groups, you would have 9 groups. 9 times 10 equals 90. 10, I'm sorry, 100 divided by 10 equals 10. 110 divided by 10 equals 11. 
and 120 divided by 10 equals 12. This also may be a good time to check your multiplication table to be sure that you have your correct values written, okay? Because you're just doing the opposite here. You're just flipping these around. 0 divided by 10 equals 0. 10 divided by 10 equals 1. 20 divided by 10 equals 2, and so on. All right, in, I'm sorry, n, 81 divided by 9, going back to the 9 table. What times 9 gives you 81? 9. And then O, 72 divided by 9 would be 8, correct. Number 2, you're finding the fractional parts. Now, this is just an even divide, okay? It's a 10 division table. One tenth of one twenty. One tenth of one hundred twenty. What times ten would give you one hundred twenty? Right here and right here. Twelve, that is correct. B one tenth of ninety equals nine. That's right. Nine times ten would equal ninety. Um, one tenth, make sure you guys are seeing this, of 110 equals what? 110 divided by 10 equals what? 11. That's right. 11 times 10 equals 110. That's a good check there. D, oh, let's pause on D. I want to go over your um, quotients first. Pop down to number three quickly. Flip this over here. 11 table on the back. We're just taking our um, 11 multiplication table. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Remember, addition. Subtraction, those are opposites. Multiplication, division, those are opposites. So we're just going to flip these over. 0 divided by 11 equals 0. 11 divided by 11 equals 1. Okay, easy stuff. But you just have to know how to set these tables up. Okay, so let's look at 3a. Let's go. 0 divided by 11 equals 0. 11, hey, and let me pause you for a second. Don't just go through and write the numbers because you know they're in order. Are you sure you're understanding how it's set up? Okay, just be careful with that. 11 divided by 11 equals 1. 22 divided by 11 equals 2 because 2 times 11 would be 22. 33 divided by 11 equals 3. 44 divided by 11 equals 4. 55 divided by 11 equals 5. 66 divided by 11 equals 6. 77 divided by 11 equals 7. I, 88 divided by 11 equals 8. 99 divided by 11 equals 9. 110 divided by 11 equals 10. 121 divided by 11 equals 11. And 132 divided by 11 equals 12. You maybe want to put this paper somewhere um, with your table so that you'll have your division table. Now let's go back up to 2D, E, and F. 1 11th of 77. 11 one eleventh of 77. So we're saying 7 divided by 11 equals what? 7. Correct. E, one eleventh of 132 equals what? This one right here. 12. That's correct. And then one eleventh of 121 equals what? 11. You would have 121 divided by 11 there. With number two, it said to find the fractional parts. And remember, it doesn't say to write 
the remainder as a fraction. So you know it's just going to be an even divide there. Okay? All right. Now look at number five. Number five is the fractional part. It says, number four, find the fractional part. Your answers will be mixed numbers. Remember, mixed numbers contain two components, a whole number and a what? Fraction. Let's look at 4a together. You have one-fifth of 63. Okay, well we know 63 is not on the 5 table, so this is going to be a remainder mixed number. So we're going to come down and we're going to take 63 and divide by 5. We look at our first number. 6 is larger than 5, so we can start here. 6 divided by 5. How many times can 5 go into 6 without going over? One time, correct. One times five equals five. Then subtract. Six minus five equals one. One is smaller than five, so we bring down the three. I'll make this a little shorter. Okay. Now we have 13 divided by five. How close can we get without going over? Two. That's right. Two times 5 would be 10. We subtract and we have a, a 3. Sorry. There's a 3 there. It's come mashed down. 3 is smaller than 5. Nothing else to bring down. So we're finished. Mixed number. So we're going to come up. We're going to take our remainder of 3 for our numerator, our divisor of 5 for the denominator, 12 and 3 fifths. You go back up in your blank and write 12 and 3 fifths. Okay? So if there were five of you and you had 63 cookies to divide, you would each get 12 and 3 fifths of a cookie. Okay? Very specific. I have 12, and you also need to give me 3 fifths of that last one. So very specific number there. So you can do B and C on your own, writing mixed numbers. Number five, Nick's family visited the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. They bought two adult tickets for $24 each ticket and three child tickets for $16 each ticket. How much did they spend on tickets? So guys, when you go somewhere and you go up to the, we went to the beach and we went to the aquarium, the Georgia Aquarium. Oh, I'm sorry, it was Myrtle Beach. We've been to the Georgia one also. But it was like, I don't know, $25 a ticket or something like that. Well, it was $25 for Mr. Upchurch, $25 for me, $25 for Rachel, $25 for Kathleen. So we didn't all get in for twenty one time charge of $25. It was $25 each. We spent $100 on tickets. So here, you're going to have to solve first. They bought two adult tickets for $24 each. So you're going to have to multiply $24 times two. And then three child tickets for $16. So $16 times how many? Three. That's right. Then you're going to need to add those two products together to get the total amount that it costs to go in. All right? It's per person. Number six, follow the signs. Um, let me grab my pencil real quick so that I have the numbers that I'd like for you to do. I would like for you to do C and D today. C and D. Now look at D. D, you're going to have a remainder, but it says write the remainder as a fraction. In your instructions, that pertains to the letter D. So for D, you're going to have a mixed number there, like this. 
okay? Number seven, round to the nearest dollar. I think we're familiar with that. And then the brain booster solve. All right, so if you have any questions about your new concept today, just let me know. And if you're following in our schedule, let's see after math, we have reading.